Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and we've got a pretty spicy deck for you in store today. Monoret Minotaurs featuring Death Bellow Warcry, the 8 mana sorcery that lets us search our library for up to 4 Minotaur creature cards with different names and put them on the battlefield. Now, this isn't the first time that we featured Death Bell of Warcry in a video. I played it when it first came out alongside Arcane Adaptation, so we could get any creature out of our deck, but now with the addition of the Jumpstart Minotaurs, we've got enough creatures to search up that we don't need to play it alongside the janky enchantment. And of course, getting up to 8 mana is still going to be a challenge, that's why we're playing it alongside Iron Crag Feet, a 4 mana sorcery that lets us add 7 red mana to our mana pool, and then we can cast only one more spell this turn. So if we have 5 lands in play, play the Iron Crag Feet, we'll have the 8 mana required to play Death Bill of Warcry, and then if we also happen to have a Crashing Drawbridge in play, we can potentially win the game on the spot, as the Drawbridge will be able to give all those Minotaurs haste until end of turn. And let's take a look at some of the Minotaurs we can search up with Death Bell of Warcry. We've got two copies of Rage Blood Shaman, a 2-3 Minotaur Shaman with Trample, giving other Minotaurs we control plus one plus one and Trample, so nice Lord for the deck. We've got two copies of Glinthorn Buccaneer, this is usually our last choice of which Minotaurs to search up with Death Bell of Warcry, but sometimes we'll have drawn some of the other Minotaurs, and this will be our last choice. A 2-4 Minotaur Pirate with Haste, and whenever we discard a card, Buccaneer deals 1 damage to each opponent, and for 1 and a red we can discard a card and draw a card, but we can only activate this if the Buccaneer is attacking. But it can also be a useful ability to set up our draws in the early turns if we don't have all the combo pieces in hand already, and we do have some other discard out to potentially synergize with the Buccaneer, so it can deal some additional incidental damage. Then we've got some other powerful Minotaurs with Nehap, a Dreadhorde Champion, a 4 mana 5 4 legendary zombie Minotaur with Trample, and whenever Nehap deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, we may discard any number of cards, and if we do draw that many cards and add that much red mana to our mana pool, and that mana won't deplete as we move across phases, so we can still use that mana in our second main phase if we'd like and Nahab also synergizes with our Glinthorn Buccaneer if we manage to connect. And then we've got two copies of Fanatic of Mogus, another addition from Jumpstart, a 4 mana 4-2 Minotaur Shaman, and when the Fanatic of Mogus enters the battlefield it deals damage to each opponent equal to her devotion to red, so we get to add up all the red mana symbols on non-land permanents we control and deal that much damage to our opponent, and on an empty board we can typically deal 7 damage to our opponent with Fanatic of Mogus by getting a Rageblood Shaman, that's 2 devotion, 2 more devotion from Neheb, one from Fanatic of Mogus, and finally two more Devotion from Sethron Herloon General, another addition from Jumpstart, a 5 mana 4-4 four four Legendary Minotaur Warrior, and whenever Sethron or another non-token Minotaur enters the battlefield under our control, we get to make a 2-3 Red Minotaur Creature Token, so if we cast a Death Bell of Warcry, getting four Minotaurs including Sethron, we get to make four Minotaur Tokens as well, so that's why having the Crashing Drawbridge to give those all haste is so important. And then for 2 and a red, Minotaurs we control get plus 1 plus 0 and gain menace and haste until end of turn. So if we somehow get enough mana to both cast Death Bell of Warcry and activate Sathron in the same turn, there would be no need for Crashing Drawbridge, but of course that's going to require 11 mana, which is not going to happen very often, so that's why we're still playing the Drawbridge alongside it, so we can attack with all our Minotaurs in the same turn. But if we don't have the Drawbridge on the following turn, we will get to activate Sathron, hopefully, and that's going to make it even more difficult for the opponent to block, as all our creatures now gain menace and have even more power for the opponent to deal with. So those are all the Minotaurs we can search up with our Death Bell of Warcry. So as you can see, our deck plays out more like a combo deck than it does a creature tribal aggro deck. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, starting out with our two drops, where we've got the full playset of Cathartic Reunion. We've got to discard two cards as an additional cost, but then we get to draw three, so we can get rid of any cards we don't need and look for the missing combo pieces. We also have four copies of Fire Prophecy, giving us some early interaction, dealing three damage to a creature, and then we can also put a card from our hand on the bottom of our library, and if we do draw a card, so once again we can get rid of any cards we don't need to look for the missing pieces. We've got four copies of Crashing Drawbridge, only really need one of them in play, the other ones we can discard to Fire Prophecy, Reunion, or the other various discard effects. And then we've got four copies of Mindstone as a nice bit of ramp, 
can set up the turn 4 kill if we go turn 2 drawbridge or mindstone, turn 3 play the other one, and then turn 4 iron crank feet into death blow war cry, thanks to the one extra mana from mindstone for the win. So it does speed up the kill significantly, and sometimes if we just draw multiple mindstones we can ramp into the war cry instead of needing the iron crank feet. And then the only card we haven't covered yet is Flame Sweep, dealing 2 damage to each creature at instant speed, great against any small creature decks like goblins, hopefully buys us enough time to assemble the combo. And then we've got a whole bunch of Minotaurs, 4 copies of Iron Crank Feet, and 4 copies of Death Ball War Cry, which is essentially the 2 card combo of this deck. And then going over the mana base, we've got 24 lands, including 20 beautiful basic mountains with the Minotaur theme from Jumpstart, and 2 copies of Castle Ambreath to pump the team, as well as 2 copies of Blast Zone to give us a bit more interaction against some more aggressive decks. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got both Feet and Warcry in hand, so that's definitely a keep. I'll still need 2 more lands, or a Mindstone and a land. Although the Buccaneer can also be useful at discarding the Warcry. Opponent is furiously mulliganing, which typically means they're on the treasure hunt deck. Which can kill on turn 4 with a good draw. They did keep 2 cards. And looks like they're on the version with Thassa's Oracle. And just islands. And there's a treasure hunt, finds another treasure hunt right away. So not too many lands there. Play Buccaneer, hit for two. Next turn I can discard two cards. Including the War Cry and the Fire Prophecy, most likely. And they hit Thassa's Oracle, so... Not their ideal draw, they would much prefer finding Oracle as their last card. To potentially be able to win on turn 4, so that's not going to be the case here. Which means we've got maybe enough time to assemble the combo. Can't really use feet alongside the Buccaneer's ability since I need to be attacking. So let's attack. And then if the first ability of Buccaneer finds a drawbridge, it's going to be interesting. Because if I find a drawbridge, I can potentially win the game next turn if I also have a land. I draw a land instead. So we'll just Buccaneer again for the one extra damage. So next turn I'll be able to play the Death Battle War Cry. So I should be able to win next turn by getting another Buccaneer. Rage Blood Shaman pumps up both Buccaneers, so that's 6 damage. And then we should get 9 more damage from our Devotion. So that should be just enough to win the game without giving our entire team haste. So do need to make sure I get the Buccaneer, Sethron and Rageblood Shaman. So 9 damage from Fanatic of Mogus, 6 more damage from the Buccaneers. Should seal the deal. Alright, so turn 5 kill against Treasure Hunt which would have been able to kill us next turn, so we definitely needed those extra bits of damage early on from the Buccaneer. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with an excellent opening hand. Just need to draw a couple lands and we're good. We've got a bit of interaction with Flame Sweep and then both our combo pieces with Feet and Warcry and even Mindstone for ramp. Could be up against goblins, in which case flame sweep is going to be very useful. Sadly, no lands. So just need two more lands to combo off. Double instigator. No need to flame sweep just yet. Land is good. I will pass with Flame Sweep available, I think. 
just so I can potentially respond to a Skirk Prospector, which could otherwise let them play Muxus. Chain Whirler's fine. So do I Flame Sweep now? Yeah, I mean, I don't really see how my opponent's killing me next turn if I flame sweep here. Alright, so next turn I will be able to set up the combo kill. So I don't think my opponent can do too much damage next turn. Goblin Matron probably searches a Muxus. Or Prospector if they already have Muxus in hand. Maybe they're missing the sixth land. But we've got Drawbridge in play, so we'll get to give our team haste, which should be enough to win. Alright, let's go for it. Luckily we didn't draw any of our Minotaurs that we already had in hand, otherwise I would be unable to search them up. Everyone has Trample, thanks to Rageblood Shaman. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. So we had all the combo pieces in hand, just needed to make sure we hit our land drops. It took a turn longer than expected, but we still got there. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. We don't have any Ironcrack feeds or Death Ball War Cries. We're just playing a bunch of removal into some Minotaurs. Typically not good enough. Although, this hand might actually be okay still. We do apply a decent amount of pressure with Rage Blood into Fanatic of Mogus. This also survives Flame Sweep with the one extra toughness from the Rage Blood. And if I draw into any of the combo pieces early on, I can always use Fire Prophecy to still try and assemble the combo. Turn one Hunted Witness. So this might be a good matchup for Flame Sweep. Black White Sacrifice, maybe. Definitely gonna kill the Priest. Now the question is what to put on the bottom. Maybe this Fanatic of Mogus anyway. Rageblood can play defense early. Still have a Flame Sweep. And Blast Song should also come in handy. So I can wait for my opponent to play an additional creature before pulling the trigger on Flame Sweep in response, so they can't use Priests. Scorpion, so we'll do it now. That way the token from Hunted Witness also has Summoning Sickness and can't possibly attack. I do get punished by village rights, I guess. Not a priest. And there's a war cry, so we just need an iron crank feet and we're golden. Alright, there we go. Iron Crag feed into Warcry. Point will probably use Priest in response 
to decrease my devotion. I think I still get rid of the Rage Bloods. I can't get a second Nahab, but I can still just get the Buccaneer instead. I mean, I could get another Nahab, but it would, of course, go away with a legendary rule. Opponent takes nine, we get a Horde of Minotaurs. And I get to smash. Get the Nahamp and Buccaneer Synergy going. Alright, hopefully no Kaya's Wrath. Otherwise we just get to activate Sathron next turn. Alright, and that'll do it. Sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. What do we think of this hand? No combo pieces, but a lot of card selection and a decent amount of interaction. I'll try it. Turn one Lava Runner. Do I want to Fire Prophecy that to prevent Spectacle? Nah, I think I'm just gonna Reunion for now. Not show them the blast zone just yet. But I will keep all the interaction. If they play another small creature, we can maybe just flame sweep. And that's perfect. I will kill both now, in case they have two one mana instants in hand to get the Steamkin out of range. Don't want them to go like shock into Wizard's Lightning. Alright, so now we're just missing lands and Iron Crank feet. I'll probably just fire Prophecy now in the hopes of finding a land so I can still play a Drawbridge afterwards. And then probably put Sathron on the bottom, I'm furthest away from casting it. And it is important that I can find a Sathron if I do eventually cast a Warcry. Still have a Flame Sweep at the ready. Can play Rageblood Shaman as a distraction while we wait for our Iron Crank feet. Pillar of Flame going face. Might see a Spectacle card here. Just another Pillar of Flame. They might have an Experimental Frenzy in hand and they're just trying to empty their hands to set up their Frenzy. So we can start taking a Blast Zone up to four, which might be more relevant than playing a Rage Blood Shaman here. Yep, and there's a Frenzy. So let's add two counters. It's gonna be a slow process, but it has to be done. So now I can play Rage Blood, still add a counter to Blast Zone. Now I could tap Drawbridge, give haste, attack for two, but if my opponent finds a Lava Runner, I don't want to take two damage unnecessarily. So I'll pass. Pillar going face. And Electrostatic Field, okay. So hopefully we can just top deck Iron Crank feeds and get the game over with. 
Otherwise, I'm going to be forced to pop this Blast Zone. And then I can play another Drawbridge, I guess. Although I should probably keep it in hand in case we draw a Reunion or a Fire Prophecy. So that's three more damage. Down to six. I could be dead here. Wizard's Landing is another four damage. And I secured the critics. Alright, it's too bad. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a uh, reasonable hand. We're just missing the Death Bell War Cry. Fire Prophecy can also dig for it. Facing a Lurus deck could be the Core Spirit Dancer deck, in which case Prophecy can be very good at dealing with a turn to Spirit Dancer. Play a drawbridge for now. And then putting Sethron on the bottom with Fire Prophecy could be the play. Because sometimes if you discard too many Minotaurs, your Death Bell of Warcry is not that exciting anymore. So being able to put those on the bottom is pretty nice. And we do see turn to Spirit Dancer. Now I could also Flame Sweep and keep Prophecy for later. I think I'm just gonna Prophecy now. Could also put the Flame Sweep on the bottom in case we just want to hard cast Sethron. But we've got a Cathartic Reunion, so I'm pretty likely to be able to assemble the combo here. It's gonna be Hushbringer, which is also annoying, since that can shut down a lot of our ETB effects. And an Alsate, but now Flame Sweep is looking great. So I can go Mindstone into Flame Sweep. I'll do it now because my opponent might have a bunch of instant speeds and enchantments they can play to save their creatures. Pass a turn. And then. Hoping to draw Death Bell of Warcry. Alright, opponent just concedes. Left without any creatures to enchant, most likely. So, yeah, if a Reunion can draw us into Death Bell of Warcry, we can just win the game on the spot. And otherwise, we'll just have to slowly deploy some Minotaurs to win the game instead. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. What do we think of this one? Only the Iron Crank feet in hand. No real card selection outside of Buccaneer's ability and the Hab if we can connect. Not the most reliable ways of sculpting our draw. Think I gotta mulligan this one. Alright, this one I can keep. I will need to draw some lands, but we do have both feet and war cry in hands and a bridge to play defense early and give the team haste. So ideally we just draw lands for the rest of the game. Alright, another goblin deck. Don't have the flame sweep this time around. I should probably reunion to try and find interaction and or lands. Which cards to discard is another question. I do want to keep drawbridge to an extent because speeding up the kill might be important but if I miss on finding lands with the first reunion then the second one could be useful too. Nah, I think I gotta take a bit of a risk. Alright, so those are some good draws. Next turn I can decide between Prophecy or Drawbridge. If they play one of their hastes granting goblins, I'll probably have to Prophecy it. So we'll do that now. And get rid of a Iron Crack feat. Alright, so hand is coming together nicely. Got another Prophecy to interact, can play Drawbridge next turn, and then we just need land 5, and we're in business. 
it's gonna be a goblin ringleader for now. Which finds Muxus and Prospector. That's a scary combination. So if my opponent plays Prospector next turn, then uh, yeah, probably wouldn't be able to stop Muxus from happening. But maybe I can kill their haste giver that they find with Muxus before they can attack. So Prospector happens, if I kill a goblin they'll still have 6 mana for Muxus. So yeah, my best bet is hoping to kill one of the haste giving goblins and hope that they only hit one of them. Could also kill the Prospector now to prevent more goblins from being cast. If they don't hit another Prospector I think I just gotta let this resolve. Alright, that's bad. So our opponent can empty their entire hand, thanks to Krenko. Hopefully they don't have another Chieftain or War Chief in hand. And then we can still potentially win this. It's fine if the Prophecy fizzles, because we have all the cards we need in hand. I wasn't gonna put anything on the bottom anyway. Alright, no War Chief or Chieftain, please. Alright, looks like we're in the clear. Now I don't know if we have lethal, but there's only one way to find out. We're definitely not gonna survive my opponent untapping, so just gotta smash here. Alright, GG's. Let's see if we got there. Our opponent has 9, 10, 13 toughness. Yeah, they would not have survived. Well, that was definitely a close one against the goblins. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and do we have a keep? I'm missing an Iron Crank feat, everything else is in place, and I can play turn 3 in the hab and maybe use the ability. Yeah, I'll try it. Facing a Lurus deck, so probably Core Spirit Dancer or us. Turn 1 Alsate confirms that. Blast Zone could also be useful in this matchup. There we see the Spirit Dancer on turn 2. Flame Sweep would be nice, or an Iron Crank Feet, I'll take it. So, no drawbridge to give the team haste. But still a turn 4 Feet into Warcry. Card I don't want to see is Hushbringer, since that can potentially stop our ETB effects. It's gonna be an Alt at Glitters instead. Opponent needs to try and set up lethal over the course of two turns. Of course, they don't know that uh, that's the case, and they keep the Spirit Dancer on defense. I don't think I want to be attacking here. I can just activate Sathron next turn and uh, attack with Menace. I guess what attacking does here is maybe force them to sack the Alsade. Although if they just have another one mana flash enchantments, I lose this for free. So we'll just wait. For the opponent to kill me, they would have had to go end of turn, play one mana flash aura, untap, another ult at Glitters. Then maybe give protection from red with Alsade, but even then it's gonna be tough for them to get up to 19 damage. But they're gonna try.
Selfless Savior, that's okay. And yeah, we just need to activate Sathron here. Hushbringer is a bit too late to the party. All our Minotaurs gain haste and menace. And one additional power. Smash. Alright, and that does it. So our Mono Red Minotaur deck, more than just a meme, also able to win some games against top tier decks like Goblins and the Core Spirit Dancer Aura deck, which I consider to be two of the best decks in Historic at the moment, especially in Best of One, that is. So yeah, not uh, too bad. Being a two-card combo as opposed to a three-card combo with Arcane Adaptation is a significant improvement in consistency. Also because we now have a bunch of cheap Minotaurs we can still play out if we don't draw the combo pieces, as opposed to having a bunch of seven mana creatures in hand that we never get to cast. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.